Hey y'all, Sylv here, and welcome back to Planet Zoo. Today's episode is all about the lengthy long boys of the African savanna, giraffes. And honestly, when I started recording this video, I wasn't really expecting it to turn into a full habitat build. I just had this idea for a giraffe shelter, which I really wanted to try and just start recording and figured I would see where it went from there. Honestly, I still don't have much of a plan for my content. I'm just doing what I feel like and experimenting with the game a bit. And hopefully it turns into a presentable video at some point. And I guess here I am today again with an idea that I wanted to show off. So I'm working on a giraffe house and in a little bit on a general giraffe habitat as well. And this was inspired in particular by the Savannah House in Blydorp in Rotterdam which I believe is the most visited zoo in the Netherlands and they have this very contemporary modern giraffe house which uses very traditional textures and elements which I think looks really cool it has an overall round shape kind of pointy and tall actually and I just really love the composition of this building and I wanted to do something similar in the game as well and just see where I could take it so I ended up building a, uh, a bit of a more dark textured building as opposed to the very light wooden beams that they use. This one's a bit lower as well. I ended up making mine a lot more round and low. And also, and this is I think the biggest difference and the most interesting thing about this build is uh, I wanted to add uh, mushrobia patterns around it. Now mushrobia are, uh, are a type of architectural element in the Arabic world. They're kind of like Oriel windows. Uh, or balconies almost in a sense with these decorated patterns all over them uh, I'm just gonna put up a picture right now to show you what these things generally look like I got a lot of comments recently asking me to bring up pictures of stuff that I'm talking about so this is what these kind of things look like and I think they're really interesting they look really cool and they're there's certainly a way I think to make this build a bit more thematically fit to the habitat of giraffes because even though of course this is still not the, the type of building that a giraffe would realistically live in in the natural world uh, it's it's based on uh, patterns and buildings that I saw in Mombasa in Kenya in particular this one apartment building which has mushrobia patterns all over it and I think it would be a cool way to give this very modern structure uh, a sort of localized look as well and also while real-life mushrobia patterns are very symmetrical and looping and really based on a strict sense of geometry, uh, very much like uh, Arabic architecture in general, you can often find geometric patterns very similar to this in tiles and textiles and just all over Arabic culture. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be really cool also because with the way that I'm doing this, which is a bit more organic and loosely done than real mushrobia would be it also kind of resembles the texture of a giraffe skin so i thought that would be really cool to i don't know kind of reflect the the culture and the the nature of giraffes themselves and, and make this big glossy structure feel a bit more local and a, a bit more part of the habitats than it otherwise would have been if it were just a big glass structure with wooden beams um so yeah that's basically what this episode revolves around and at this point the building is already finished because honestly it's quite easy to build things like this with uh, the with the dome trick i guess as i should call it now i know a lot of people watching this haven't watched my planet coaster videos so i'm just gonna try to explain this the best i can uh, but in planet coaster there's always been a very popular trick to create domes and spires and other symmetrical elements uh, which is to take one grid piece, that is a, a piece that spawns a grid and that stays on the grid in the game, and build uh, one side of a dome or a spire or any kind of multi-directional symmetrical building that you want to make uh, on one side of this piece. And then once you're done making that one part of it, you copy it around to the other side, grab the whole structure, and because of the way that selecting things uh, works in uh, Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo, the game just grabs the center point between these two scenery, pe uh, scenery pieces and once you start rotating this and place it down each time you rotate it, you can just basically make any symmetrical round shape that you want. So this is a trick that a lot of people have always used to create domes and spires, 
but I think it could also work for a round building like this. So that's why this whole experimentation kind of started happening as well. Unfortunately, you can't actually make geodesic domes with this trick because the glass starts intersecting itself in some strange ways, but I'm still trying to work on how to make geodesic domes. I've put way too much time into this, but I really want to figure out how to make geodesic domes in this game at some point. I'll get there, hopefully. Um, even though it's impossible to do it with the, the in-game pieces because they're equilateral triangles or pentagons or hexagons, um, I'm gonna try and break this at some point. Anyway, uh, to try and get on topic a little bit more, this was just how I was inspired to build this building and how I built it in the end and how I was able to build it so quickly as well. But for the rest of this episode, I'm going to focus on the rest of the habitat. Starting here with a viewing platform and shelter for guests. And the idea behind this platform was to make it like these platforms that you find uh, very often in real life zoos, where guests can have very close interaction uh, with the giraffes. Because ideally, you should be exactly at neck height with the giraffes. Now, in the game, I had to do a bit of trial and error on this. I, or so I thought actually, to try and get the height right, because it's really difficult to figure out exactly how tall the giraffes will be and up to what height they will come if you're looking at them from this platform. Uh, but somehow I managed to get it right right away. So yeah, hopefully, if all goes well, we will see some giraffes coming up to this platform and having some interaction with guests. Now, I can already spoil that the game was not actually programmed to do this. You don't get people petting the giraffes or feeding them or things like this as you would see in real life zoos. But sometimes I get lucky enough and get a giraffe coming up to the people and then they will actually look at their heads and they'll point upwards. Uh, the guests, I mean, not the giraffes. Uh, and have some sort of guest interaction, which I think is super cool. And I'll have some footage of that at the end of this video. Um, but mostly I just wanted to build this structure because realistically it's something that you find in a lot of giraffe habitats in real life as well. And I want to give it up to Frontier for adding these detailed thatch roof pieces in the African theme because they're really cool. Thatch roof pieces are something that I still feel were sorely missing in Planet Coaster. Even though there were some, they were not nearly as detailed and realistic as these ones. So I'm really happy that these are in the game. They're definitely really useful for Polynesian or African or any kind of tropical theme like that. Indonesian or... I don't know, I'm still working out ideas for that. But yeah, I think they're really cool. Now, aside from that, the only thing really separating the guests and the giraffes is just this ditch with rockwork on the guest side and a gentle slope on the side of the giraffes, as you'll often find in real life zoos as well, just to be able to provide the guests with an unobstructed view of the giraffes. Now, <laughs> just something I want to mention, I'm sorry about all of the Steam notifications popping up in the top right corner, I'm still going to have to figure out how to hide those. Uh, I know I might sound a bit like a noob at the moment for somebody who has a YouTube channel, but honestly, I had to start recording in Bandicam because for some reason DxTory doesn't record the game. And I've been counting on DxTory for a while, even in uh, my cheat engine footage of Planet Coaster when no other program could still record it but DxTory. Uh, but for some reason, it doesn't work anymore on Planet Zoo. And now I'm gonna have to settle for Bandicam and I'm still getting used to it. Shout out for, to uh, Rudy Renkamal for giving me uh, the tip that Bandicam actually works because I had no idea what program to even record this game with at first. But yeah, I'm still trying to get used to it and trying to see how I should actually record my footage. So I'm sorry if it's not as good of a quality as you're used to from me. Uh, I'm still setting up a sort of new workflow now. Anyway. I kind of want to talk about ethics and the giraffe habitat specifically in a bit after that as well because there was this really interesting discussion that I got involved with in the Bro Nation Discord yesterday about the ethics of zoos and to what extent this matters in game uh, because I do think no matter your uh, opinion about the existence of zoos and how ethical you think they are and whether or not they can be ethical uh, Planet Zoo is just a game, so I think these 
Considerations are not that important, not nearly as much as they are in real life when real animals come into play, but still, there is the question, I think, of whether you should try and make your zoos in Planet Zoo as ethical as possible, or whether it's also okay to just build unethical zoos if they look good, if they look good and if that's the point of what you're trying to do. And personally, I think it's all about awareness, uh, to what extent you're aware of how ethical what you're building is. Uh, because if you're trying to build a good zoo and if you're trying to take care of your animals well, I think you do kind of need to put in the effort to at least learn about them, what kind of habitats they need, uh, learn to care for their needs. Not even necessarily only in the game and in terms of the statistics of the animals, but even in real life, uh, what kind of things would work in a zoo and what wouldn't be good practices. And personally, I think that as somebody with the privilege of having quite a large audience. I would also just like to use this game as a way to explore the ideas of what makes zoo design and specifically habitat design good and ethical. Because, I don't know, I feel like if I, if I were to make habitats that are completely unethical and really just focused on, on making them look good, I would give a wrong image of what zoos are about and uh, what zoos should be and um, Given that, I guess, with the audience that I have, my videos will be some sort of example for people to follow, I want to make sure that I use at least common sense and I make it a good example and maybe even use it as a way to educate myself and other people about zoo design. Because honestly, for me, creative simulation games like this have always been a way to explore things about the real world as well. I've learned so much about theme parks through Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 and Planet Coaster, uh, and I've learned so much about urban planning through City Skylines. Honestly, it's what inspired me to study urban studies to this day. Uh, so I think games like this honestly have a power to inspire and educate people. And given that fact, I would like to make my zoos also as ethical as possible and try to use them as a way to explore real life zoo designs which maybe is a bit pretentious and i guess it is but at the end of the day i'm just a nerd like that and that's the kind of stuff i find interesting and i just like learning about the things that appear in creative games so i don't know that's my perspective but i'm certainly not going to stop anyone from building unethical zoos if they want that or maybe even use that as an exploration of what, what's a bad practice in terms of zoo design um, but for those that do want to focus on caring for their animals and seeing how in the real world zoos should be designed with ethical considerations in mind that's the kind of thing that i want to do as well now, with that in mind, oops, I dropped my USB stick, sorry about the noise. With that in mind, I'm working on a sort of backstage holding area behind the shelter building here, uh, just to have a place where the giraffes could be cared for and where you might have staff section or a kitchen or anything like that. All the kind of facilities that you would typically find right next to a habitat as opposed to in a separate building like in Planet Zoo, where animals get carried to the separate building in a tiny little box, which, uh, of course, is, uh, is a way that Planet Zoo has to tackle finding a balance between realism and gameplay. Um, but I'd like to at least have suspense of disbelief that there is some kind of realistic habitat design involved, so I want to at least include some backstage set, uh, sections to some minimal degree as well. And, god, I, I kind of lost track of what I was talking about. So. Yeah, I just added that holding area at the back, but there will also be some separated areas within the shelter dome-like building itself. I actually opted for calling this building the onion, I suppose, because to me this thing really looks like an onion. Sometimes you even do get onions that are kind of shaped like this, that are just really fat and thick and not as round as onions typically are. And, you know, especially if you cut off the top, uh, because you're starting to chop it or whatever, uh, an onion kind of looks like this on its side, I guess. So, yeah, this building looks like an onion, I think, so honestly, that's just what I'm going to call it. And the rest of this habitat is really quite standard, I feel. I'm not really exploring too much. A part of the ethical uh, discussion was also about to what extent you should just really focus on copying real-life zoos or try and 
find a way to make it better. Um, because, you know, in, in a game like Planet Coaster, you can just wildly copy theme parks in real life and it'll be realistic and probably quite good. But in a game like this, I think you also have to put some consideration in terms of how good you think the zoos that you're trying to get inspiration from are. I guess that's why I was feeling a bit guilty about basing this habitat just on the general appearance of uh, giraffe habitats in zoos around the world. Uh, but at the same time, they are all very similar. And as far as I've been able to tell, giraffes are some of the easier animals to take care of and um, keep in a zoo. Even though, of course, their behavior will be different from their natural environment, they seem to be better than a lot of animals are in, in terms of be living in captivity. There are just some slight difference, which is, uh, differences which I found which are quite interesting. Apparently, they always need to look for things to do with their tongue, because in the, re in the real world, they would use it to look for food and things like this. Um, but in zoos, they don't have as much to do with their tongue, so they're just kind of slapping it about. Uh, and they also sit down a lot, which apparently doesn't happen in the wild. At least it doesn't happen very much, it certainly happens just because they're so long and lengthy that getting up takes a lot of time and sitting around predators would be a very dangerous thing to do. And they do realize that in a zoo, they're pretty much safe from any predators. So they tend to get a bit lazier in that sense. But some small differences aside, they are pretty chill animals, kind of very humble giants and quite easy to manage as well, even for a zoo, as far as charismatic megafauna goes, especially. So they're certainly one of the animals that I think you don't have to worry about as much when you're building habitats for them. I'm just really making sure that this habitat is large enough for the giraffes, that there's enough enrichment uh, to play with, and some slightly different terraforming and things like this. And aside from that, I'm also just really providing the basic ideas of what a habitat should be. It should be all visible. Uh, at once by staff members. They shouldn't be able to lose a giraffe at the end of a habitat somehow, but at the same time the giraffe should have some space to get away from the guests, while also the guests should be able to get decent views of the giraffes everywhere. It's always a, a, a case of balancing the needs of the giraffes, the guests, and at the same time the staff members that need to care for the giraffes. And of course I'm also trying to uh, tend to the statistics in game, which uh, so, which is something I should probably actually mention in the last episode. I didn't show off the stats for the macaques or anything like that, but the stats all ended up being okay somehow, even though I didn't, you know, I, I built the habitat without them in it, so I couldn't really check while I was building whether I was providing the right foliage and the right terraforming, but it turned, to be, it turned out to be more or less okay. And the same actually goes for these giraffes. Hell, it's even better. Even the foliage and the terraforming is nearly perfectly 100% okay, which I'm honestly quite surprised about because I wasn't really sure if it was going to work out. Um, but yeah, some people asked about statistics and I guess I can already say that these habitats have been fine for the animals as far as the game is concerned. So that's a good way to, uh, to kind of test whether your habitats are ethical as well. Although I do think the size uh, that the game asks you to give to the animals in terms of habitats can be on the small side, so I tend to overshoot that quite a bit, and I'm overshooting that quite a bit with this habitat as well. I guess it is quite a large field that they get outside here, and the shelter is more than large enough for them as well. Although at the same time, they do get a lot of curious faces on top of the shelter as well. Also, before I forget this at the end of this video, I need to give a shout out to Nutria Hirsch on Twitter, who I've talked about during some of my beta uh, videos as well as the last video, but I kept calling him the guy whose username I forgot, but gave me tips on Twitter, <laughs> but I should probably stop doing that. So from now on, I'm definitely gonna remember his name. He shot me a Twitter message about that and I kind of feel bad about it. Anyway, uh, thanks for all the help you've given along the, along the way and I guess I'm repeating myself at this point, but please, if there is any constructive criticism that you want to give, anything that you think I did terribly 
please tell me so I can get better at this game. Um, because nobody gets better from just people telling them that their stuff looks cool. And there are definitely things that I do terribly, so just let me know. And yeah, I think that's the only way I can actually improve and get better at this stuff. I also had a bunch of questions in some of the last videos whether the game is really like this because turns out that a lot of people are watching these videos who don't have Planet Zoo but are looking into maybe buying it and to a lot of them it seems like this game is all about the aesthetics and doesn't really have any management and I have to say this game is very management focused and I'm not really selling exactly what the game is about I'm just kind of focusing on what I like to do which is going really into the nitty gritty of things and trying to make things realistic and themed. Um, but that's not really what you have to do. You can also build simple habitats or open up a career mode map or uh, even download things off the workshop and focus on management. I think between these two, two play styles, there is a balance and I'm kind of sitting on one outer end of the scale, mostly focused on aesthetics and you know, the idea of how theoretically my zoo would run as opposed to the actual gameplay. Um, but you can certainly sit on the other side of that balance as well. So I think it's quite a flexible game in that sense. And my videos definitely don't reflect what the game will be like for the average person, I think. Uh, you can also definitely build a habitat in much shorter time than I typically do if you focus a bit less on extreme detailing. Either way, That'll be it for this video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll leave you with some cinematic shots. Bye guys.